Hi. In this video, we're going to offer some cautionary words about working with problems involving independence of path and antiderivatives. The message of this video is one that you'll run into many times in your mathematical career, and it is simply that you need to make sure the conditions of a theorem are satisfied before you can expect the conclusion to hold. All right, so we're going to illustrate this with a, a couple of theorems from our past videos and a couple of non-examples. We're going to see that the conclusions do not hold, and then we're going to step back and see which of the hypotheses failed. All right, so here's our first theorem. This is the one that says that if f is analytic and your domain is simply connected, then the integral of f from uh, along the, the contour c is going to have the same value no matter which contour c you choose as long as the endpoints are the same. Now let's consider the function 1 over z and let's say that our c is, the, uh, is one of these three contours. Each of them starts at the, the point 1 and ends up at the point minus 1. If we wanted to compute the integral of 1 over z along each of these contours we might parameterize. Here are some examples of some parameterizations. We might feed them into the integrals. Uh, you're welcome to go through the details if you like we'll end up with a value of basically minus pi i for this third column and minus pi i for the second column, but positive pi i for the first column. So what we see here is, though, is that even though some of these paths do end up with the same value for the integral, not all of them do. The value of the integral is not path independent. It does depend on the contour you choose to travel along. So what failed here? We don't have independence of path. So we go back to the conditions and we'll look and we'll see that simply connected is a requirement of the domain that we're, um, we're working with. Now the function 1 over z is analytic but only at places other than the origin. So that we could say that 1 over z is analytic in the domain of all places except z equals 0. Well that is a, a, a region with a hole in it so it's not simply connected, it's uh, doubly connected but that's not good enough. We need simply connected to be sure that independence of path will, will hold. All right, moving on, let's take a look at that same theorem, but let's try a different function. We're going to replace uh, 1 over z with z bar instead, the conjugate of z, and we're going to integrate this function along these three contours. Now using the same parameterizations as before, we'll plug them into the integral. This time though, we're taking z bar as our function. So we'll end up with, uh, this time, three different values. We'll end up with minus 2i, minus pi i, or pi i, depending on which contour we take. And so we don't have independence of path. Now, the function z bar is defined everywhere in the complex plane. It's continuous everywhere. It's just not analytic. You'll remember that when we talked about the Cauchy-Riemann equations, we tested z bar and we saw that uh, this function failed the Cauchy-Riemann equations at every place in the complex plane. So the function is not analytic. And it's for this reason that we can, we can say it doesn't have the path independence property when it comes to integrating. All right, now as our, we move into our third non-example, we, we know that we need to check the conditions. So let's take a look at the function 1 over z. We know that it does not have a simply connected domain. It's only defined in the uh, complex numbers minus zero. And that's not simply connected. But just because we failed the hypothesis doesn't necessarily mean that we failed the conclusion. So we might ask, does that function have an antiderivative? You know, we know that it doesn't satisfy everything about the hypothesis, but could it still uh, have an antiderivative? Well, let's take a look at it. The natural log of z, the principal value of the logarithm of z, seems like a good candidate. Uh, we do know that the derivative of this function is 1 over z everywhere except the branch cut, uh, which is the, uh, the negative real axis and the origin. Now, in fact, you can define a logarithm with a branch cut that could be anywhere. We don't have to use the, the negative real axis as the branch cut. And whatever branch of the logarithm you take, 1 over z will be its derivative. So it makes you wonder if the logarithm could be an antiderivative. Well, Let's take a look at one of the theorems that we saw in one of the other videos. That theorem was that if we had a function that was continuous on a domain, then that function has an antiderivative if and only if the uh, integ integral of that function is independent of path. 
Now 1 over z, we just got done looking at a couple different contours. We saw that although 1 over z is continuous on the complex numbers minus the origin, and that's a, that's a domain, we don't have any requirement about whether it's simply connected or not, there is no independence of path. The value of the integral of 1 over z along these two contours has uh, changes. We have uh, pi i and minus pi i. Now what that tells us is that because we don't have independence of path, 1 over z does not have an antiderivative on the, uh, on the domain of the complex plane minus the origin. All right, now that might take a little bit of time to wrap your head around, um, but it's true, there is no antiderivative that will work every single place in the complex plane except for the origin. All right, well, as you, uh, as you look at the theorems we've covered in the last two or three videos, uh, we want to keep you aware that you need to mind the hypotheses. The conclusions are the startling part, they're the part we like, but pay attention to the, the part where it says f is analytic and you're dealing with a simply connected domain, or the part that says simply f is continuous and you're dealing with a domain. If you can remember these hypotheses uh, and can apply the conclusions appropriately, uh, all should be well. All right, well, we'll talk to you next time.